Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am Josh and this is the South African History. We are continuing today with Paul Creer. Field Corner. The Boers and the local Tswana Basoto chieftains were in a near constant conflict, mainly over land. Creer was elected Field Corner of his district in 1852 and in August that year he took part in the Battle of Dimawe a raid against the Twana chief Sechele I. The Boer commander was headed by Pretorius, but in practice he did not take part as he was suffering from dropsy or edema. Creer narrowly escaped death twice. First, a piece of shrapnel hit him in the head but knocked him out without cutting him. Later, a Tswana bullet swiped him across his chest, tearing his jacket but not wounding him. The commando wrecked David Livingston's mission station at Kolobang, destroying his medicines and books. Livingston was away at the time. Kruger's version of the story was that the Boers found an armory and a workshop for repairing firearms in Livingston's house and interpreting this as a breach of Britain's promise at the Sand River was not to arm tribal chiefs, confiscated them Whatever the truth, Livingston wrote about the Boers in strongly condemnatory terms thereafter, depicting them as mindless barbarians. Livingston and many others criticized the Boers for abducting women and children from tribal settlements and taking them home to work as slaves. The Boers argued that they did not keep these captives as slaves, but as in Bukalungs, endangered apprentices who having lost their families, were given bed, board and training in a Boer household until reaching adulthood. Modern scholarships widely dismissed this as a technical ruse by the Boers to enforce a means of an inexpensive labour for them while avoiding overt slavery. Gazina Krier had an inbukeling maid for whom she eventually arranged marriage and paid for her dowry. Having been promoted to the rank of lieutenant between field corner and commandant, Creer formed part of a commando sent against the chief Muchiwa in December 1852 to recover some stolen cattle. Pretorius was still sick and only nominally in command. Seven months later, on the 23rd of July 1853, Pretorius died, aged 54. Just before the end, he sent for Creer, but the young man arrived too late. Mankey says that Pretorius was perhaps the first person to recognize that behind Creer's rough exterior was a most singular person with an intellect all the more remarkable for being almost entirely self-developed. Commandant Pretorius did not name a successor as Commandant General. His eldest son, Martinus Vessel Pretorius, was appointed in his stead. The younger Pretorius elevated Kruger to the rank of commandant. Pretorius, the son, claimed power over not just Transvaal, but also the Orange River area. He said the British had promised it to his father, but virtually nobody, not even supporters like Creer, accepted this. Following Sir George Cathcart's replacement of Smith as governor in Cape Town, the British policy towards the Orange River sovereignty changed to the extent that the British were willing to pull out and grant independence to a second Boer Republic there. This was in spite of the fact that in addition to the Boer settlers, there were many English-speaking colonists who wanted rule from the Cape to continue. On the 23rd of February 1854, Sir George Russell Clerk signed the Orange River Convention, ending the sovereignty and recognizing what the Boers dubbed the Orange Freestaat or Orange Free State. Bloemfontein, a former British garrison town, became Free State's capital. The Transvaal seat of the government became Pretoria, named after the elder Pretorius. The South African Republic was in practice split between the Southwest and Central Transvaal 
where most of Pretorius' supporters were. A regionalist factions of the Zoutspansberg, Leidenberg and Utrecht districts that viewed any central authority with suspicion. Creer's first campaign as commandant was in the latter part of 1854 against the chiefs Mapella and Makapan near the Waterberg. The chiefs retreated into what became called the Caves of Makapan or Makapan's Ghat with many of their people and cattle and a siege ensued in which thousands of defenders died mainly from starvation. When Commandant General Piet Potgitter of Zoutpansberg was shot dead, Creer advanced under heavy fire to retrieve the body and was almost killed himself. Mediator Martinus Pretorius hoped to achieve either federation or amalgamation with the Orange Free State. But before he could contemplate this, he would have to unite the Transvaal. In 1855, he appointed an eight-man constitutional commission, including Creer, which presented a draft constitution in September that year. Leidenberg and Zoutpansberg rejected the proposal, calling, it less, calling for a less centralized government. Pretorius tried again in 1856, holding meetings with an eight-man commissions in Rustenburg, Potchefstroom and Pretoria. But Stefanus Schumann, Zoutpansberg's new commandant general, repudiated these efforts. The commission settled upon a formalized nation Volksrat or parliament and created an executive council headed by a president. Pretorius was sworn in as the first president of the South African Republic on the 6th of January 1857. Creer successfully proposed Schumann for the post of National Commandant General, hoping to thereby end the factional disputes and foster unity. But Schumann categorically refused to serve under this constitution of Pretorius. With the Transvaal on the verge of civil war, tensions also rose with the Orange Free State after Pretorius' ambitions of absorbing it became widely known. Kruger had a strong personal reservations about Pretorius, not considering him as a father's equal, but nevertheless remained steadfastly loyal to him. After the Free State's government dismissed an ultimatum from Pretorius to cease what he regarded as the marginalization of his supporters south of the Waal, Pretorius called up the Burgers and rode to the border prompting President Jacobus Nicolaus Borsov of the Free State to do the same. Creer was dismayed to learn of this, and on reaching the Transvaal's commando, he spoke out against the idea of fighting with fellow Boer. When he learned that Borsov had called on Schumann to lead the commando against Pretorius from Zoutpansberg and Leidenberg, he realized that disbanding was no longer enough and they would now have to make terms. With Pretorius' approval, Creer met Borsov under a white flag. Creer made clear that he personally disapproved of Pretorius' actions and the situation as a whole, but defended his president when the Free State began to speak harshly of him. A commission of 12 men from each republic, including Creer, reached a compromise whereby Pretorius would drop his claim on the Free State, and a treaty was concluded on the 2nd of June, 1857. Over the next year, Creer helped to negotiate a peace agreement with the Free State and Moshushu I of Bosoto, and persuaded Skuman to take part in successful talks regarding the constitutional revisions under which Zoutpansberg accepted the central government with Skuman as Commandant General. On the 28th of June 1858, Skuman appointed Creer Assistant Commandant General of the South African Republic. All in all, Creer's biographer T. R. H. Davenport comments he had, he had shown a loyalty to authority in political disputes, devotion to duty as an officer, and a real capacity for power play, forming the Doper Church. Creer considered providence his guide in life and referred to scripture constantly. He knew large sections of the Bible by heart. He understood the biblical text literally and inferred from them that the earth was flat. 
a belief he retained firmly to his dying day. At mealtimes he said grace twice, at length an informal Dutch rather than the South African dialect that was to become Afrikaans. In late 1858, when he returned to Buchenhout's Kloof, he was mentally and physically drained following the exertions of the past few years, and in the midst of a spiritual crisis, hoping to establish a personal relationship with God, he ventured into the Michalisberg and spent several days without food or water. A search party found him, nearly dead from hunger and thirst, Davenport records. The experience reinvigorated him and greatly intensified his faith, which for the rest of his life was unshakable and according to Mankis, perceived by some of his contemporaries as like that of a child. Kreer belonged to the Doppers, a group of about 6,000 that followed an extremely strict interpretation of traditional Calvinist doctrine. They based their theology almost entirely on the Old Testament and among other things wished to eschew hymns and organs and read only from the Psalms. When the 1858 Synod of the formed the Kerk van Afrika, or the NHK, the main church of the Transvaal, decided to enforce the singing of modern hymns, Kreer led a group of Dolpers that denounced the NHK as deluded and false and left its Rustenburg congregation. They formed the Gereformde Kerk van Zuid-Afrika, or the GRK, thereafter known informally as the Dopper Church, and recruited the Reverend Dirk Postma and like-minded traditionalist recently arrived from the Netherlands to be their minister. This act also had secular ramifications, as according to the 1858 constitution, only NHK members could take part in public affairs. Civil War, Commandant General In late 1859, Pretorius was invited to stand for president in the Orange Free State, where many burghers now favoured Union, partly as a means to overcome the Basotho. The Transvaal constitution he had enacted made it illegal to simultaneously hold office abroad, but nevertheless he readily did so and won. The Transvaal Volksraad attempted to sidestep the constitutional problems surrounding this by granting Pretorius half a year's leave, hoping a solution might come about during this time, and the President's duty left for Bloemfontein, appointing Johannes Hermanus Grobler to be acting President in his absence. Pretorius was sworn in as the President of the Free State on the 8th of February 1860. He sent a deputation to Pretoria to negotiate union the next day. Kreer and the others in the Transvaal government disliked Pretorius's unconstitutional dual presidency and worried that Britain might declare the Sand River and the Orange River conventions void if the republics joined. Pretorius was told by the Transvaal Volkraat on the 10th of September 1860 to choose between his two posts. To the surprise of both supporters and detractors, he resigned as president of the Transvaal and continued in the Free State after Schumann unsuccessfully attempted to forcibly supplant Grobler as acting president. Kreer persuaded him to submit a Volksrat hearing where Schumann was censured and relieved of his post. Willem Cornelius Janse van Rensburg was appointed acting president while a new election was organized for October 1862. Having returned home, Kreer was supposed to receive a message urgently requesting his presence in the capital, the Volksrat having recommended him as a suitable candidate. He replied that he was pleased to be summoned, but his membership in the Dopper Church meant he could not enter politics. Van Rensburg promptly had legislation passed to give equal political rights to members of all reformed denominations. Schumann mustered a commando at Porchestrum, but was routed by Kreer on the night of the 9th of October 1862. After Schumann returned with a larger force, Kreer and Pretorius held negotiations where it was agreed to hold a special court on the disturbances in January 1863, and soon thereafter 
fresh elections for president and commandant general, Schumann was found guilty of rebellion against the state and banished. In May, the election results were announced. Van Rensburg became president, with Creer as commandant general. Both expressed disappointment at the low turnout and resolved to hold another set of elections. Van Rensburg's opponent at this time was Pretorius, who had resigned his office in the Orange Free State and returned to the Transvaal. Turnout was higher and on the 12th of October, the Volksrat announced another Van Rensburg victory. Kreer was returned as Commandant General with a large majority. The civil war ended with Kreer's victory over Jan Fuljun's commando, raised in support of Pretorius and Skuman at the Crocodile River on the 5th of January 1864. Elections were held yet again, and this time Pretorius defeated Van Rensburg. Kreer was re-elected as Commandant General with over two-thirds of the vote. The civil war had led to an economic collapse in the Transvaal, weakening the government's ability to back up its professed authority and sovereignty over the local chiefdoms, though Leidenburg and Utrecht did now accept the central administration. By 1865, tensions had risen with the Zulus to the east and war had broken out again between the Orange Free State and the Basotho. Pretorius and Creer led a commander of about 1,000 men south to help the Free State. The Basotho were defeated and Moshushu ceded some of his territory, but President Johannes Brandt of the Orange Free State decided not to give any of the conquered land to the Transvaal Burgers. The Transvaal men were scandalized and returned home in mass, despite Kreer's attempts to maintain a discipline. The following February, after a meeting of the Executive Council in Portchester, Kreer capsized his cart during the journey home and broke his left leg. On one leg, he righted the cart and continued the rest of the way. His injury incapacitated him for the next nine months and his left leg was thereafter slightly shorter than his right. In 1867, Pretoria sent Kreer to restore law and order in Zoutpansberg. He had around 500 men, but very low resources of ammunition, and the discipline in the ranks was poor. On reaching Skumansdal, which was under the threat by Chief Katlaker, Kreer and his officers resolved that holding the town was impossible and ordered a general evacuation following which Katlaker raised the town. The loss of Skumansdal, once a prosperous settlement by Boer standards, was considered a great humiliation by the Burgers. The Transvaal government formally exonerated Kruger over the matter, ruling that he had been forced to evacuate Skumansdal by factors beyond his control, but some still argued that he had given up the town too readily. Peace returned to Zoutpansberg in 1869 following the intervention of the Republic Swazi allies. Pretorius stepped down as president in November 1871. In the 1872 election, Kreer's preferred candidate Willem Robinson was decisively defeated by the Reverend Thomas Francis Berger a church minister from the Cape who was noted for his eloquent preaching but controversial for some because of his liberal interpretation of the scriptures. He did not believe in the devil, for example. Kreer publicly accepted Berger's election, announcing at his inauguration that as, as a good Republican he submitted to the vote of the majority but he had grave personal reservations regarding the new president. He particularly disliked Berger's new education law, which restricted children's religious instruction to outside school hours. In Kreer's view, an affront to God. This couple, coupled with the sickness of Gezina and their children with malaria caused Kreer to lose interest in his office. In May 1873, he requested an honorable discharge from his post, which Berger promptly granted. The office of Commandant General was abolished the following week. Kreer moved his main residence 
to book a note from Dane near Rustenburg and for a time absented himself from public affairs. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm really enjoying this part of the history. So if you're enjoying it as well, please hit the like button, throw a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are about Paul Greer and his actions up to this time. If you want to see what's happening further, just stick around, hit the subscribe button, hit the not notification bell and YouTube will let you know as soon as a new video comes out. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and stay strong.